Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here, and you've officially been smurfed. A little over 30 years ago, America was introduced to these tiny blue mythical creatures with white hats. They came all the way from an enchanted forest and their mushroom homes, apparently from Belgium, from a company called Peyo. And before you knew it, America thought that they were the biggest sensation since the Hello Kitty came to us. And of course, once a famous cartoon company named Hanna-Barbera got a hold of them, they spawned a cartoon show that lasted for believe it or not, nine seasons, and the rest is history. Of course, I'm thinking about those jolly little creatures that just love to sing and dance and be merry, the Smurfs. Well, guess what? They finally came to the big screen in a live-action film, and they're digital, not cell-animated this time. And then, of course, as an 80s child, it's one of my claim to fames that I loved so dearly, next to things like Transformers, Alvin and the Chipmunks, what have you, what did I think? Well, I'm gonna have to say that I may have to go with the negatives before I actually introduce you to the positives of this movie. Did I enjoy this movie? The answer is yes, but it really wasn't a sensational film. I mean, to take a cartoon and turn it into a movie takes a lot of work because here are characters that basically get a problem solved no matter what the situation is done in 30 minutes and sometimes it's very hard to turn that 30 minute cartoon into a 90 minute to two hour movie. Sometimes you will get a success like the South Park movie, Beavis and Butthead do America, even the Powerpuff Girls, but sometimes it will be a massive failure like Transformers. Thank you, Michael Bay. Unfortunately, the Smurfs goes sort of in the direction of the Transformers, but not entirely, because they just made it as good as they possibly could make it. I mean, it starts off with their little mushroom homes, and then all of a sudden they end up going to New York City and trying to find their way back home. That is a spoiler. I'm sorry, but I don't know if you even plan on seeing this movie in theaters. Anyway... Also, the other thing I didn't like was the fact that they were brought to New York City and the actors that were used. Now, when I saw Neil Patrick Harris was in this movie, I thought that there was a little bit of hope because if NPH finds something in this movie, there's got to be something good. But I think that was one of the major weaknesses of this movie. Even though Neil Patrick Harris, Gemma Mays, and Sophie Vigera, they're great actors and actresses, I just feel they didn't really bring much to this movie, and I also feel that it just made it a little bit jumbled and a little bit confusing. But, let's take a look at the positives. One of the things that I did have to say that kept me sitting in this theater and watching this movie was the true tribute that the Smurfs movie played to its comic strip and cartoon counterparts. The voice cast that they got for all these Smurfs characters were dead on, stuck to the original personalities of the cartoon characters, and just put them in this so-so movie. But you had great voices, like Jonathan Winters playing the role of Papa Smurf. Unfortunately, the late Don Messick wasn't alive to see it. But a fun fact is, Jonathan Winters was in fact linked to the cartoon. He actually did the voice of Grandpa Smurf. He did a great job. Of course, you have other people like Paul Rubens, Alan Cumming, Katy Perry, Anton Yeltsin, and the list goes on and on. So, also you have Gargamel in this movie, played by the extremely talented Hank Azaria, and Frank Welker, also reprising his role as Azriel the Cat. Now, I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to withstand this movie besides the Smurfs. Azriel and Gargamel together, perfect... They did just exactly what you did in the cartoon, and the digital work that they did on Azriel was fantastic. He looked like a real cat, and he still acted and looked like that kitty from the cartoons, and I really did enjoy it. Also, I really liked the fact that the Smurf characters did a great job, you know, sticking to the cartoon roles that they had. It felt like I was actually watching a 90-minute long episode of the cartoon, and I love the fact that the whole movie revolved around my favorite Smurf, and that was Clumsy. He is just that one Smurf that tries to be the best and tries to uh, help his family, impress his father, 
And he's just clumsy. He can never do it right. And he tries so hard. And I love how the humans in the movie sympathized with him and how he tried so hard and he actually ends up doing great things as he always ended up doing in the cartoon. Still, here's the thing. If you loved this cartoon, you will definitely be able to sit through this movie and you'll definitely get some laughs. And there will be points where you will smile because you're going to be like, Oh, I remembered that from the cartoon. That was awesome. Blah, blah, blah. But one way or another, it really wasn't a great movie. I could have actually waited for DVD, but, you know, it wasn't terrible. I'm going to give it my verdict of two out of four. Again, 80s child, if you grew up with the Smurfs, you're gonna love the Smurfs in this movie. It would have been nice to see more Smurfs doing other things, even though some of them, like Hefty and Jokey and Vanity and Painter, all made a one-shot appearance in the movie, and word through the grapevine is because apparently this movie did a decent job, there's gonna be a Smurfs too, so I'm hoping to see more Smurfs thrown into the fray. Comment, like, and subscribe, guys. The question that I want to leave with you today is, it's been officially announced that there will be another Hanna-Barbera cartoon character coming to life. Hong Kong Fui, voiced by Eddie Murphy. Your take? I'm the Lawn Gnome, and remember, actions speak louder than words.